Hi, this is Mike Ignatowski, the creator of the Green Fox Spreadsheet, the spreadsheet that uses Excel programming to make the spreadsheet behave like an electronic baseball score sheet or score book, and it automatically computes the game stats, which can be a big time time saver. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you find this video helpful. In today's video, I'd like to cover some of the features that the Green Fox Spreadsheet has that relate to this player usage, meaning lineups and substitutions, as well as lineup player information, like what position they're playing. So in this example, let's just say I'm going to play a game with the Looney Tunes versus the Brady Bunch. And instead of manually clicking each one of these positions and typing in somebody's name, you know, it makes more sense and saves more time if I can just paste a lineup in that one of my standard lineups. So, so there's a tab at the bottom called lineups and I have several different examples of lineup templates. But in this first example I, I'm just going to grab these Looney Tunes lineups. So here I have my lineup. I'm going to click on Speedy and click on Tweety, hold the shift key down. On Windows, I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. Go over to my score sheet, click on the top player, Control V to paste. Now I have my lineup in there. I do the same thing for the Brady Bunch. It's important on the lineup that I want to mention one thing. In these cells, I have a little red triangle. That means there's a little tip in there, a note. So this talks about the batting lineup notes. There's a few things. But the most important thing that it mentions here is you have to fill in these spots from the top down. It can take up to four players in a given lineup position and the starter always has to be at the top and your substitutes will then fill in from the top down. If you don't do it that way the stats won't work right as far as computing matching up the name with the stats. So that's the important thing on how to fill the names in the lineup. The next thing I want to talk about is the player information that's included in your lineup. By default, there's one column and it's labeled this, this position label. And that is hard coded and is always visible. However, if you hover in this um, cell, you can see there's also a note here and it talks about going to the config sheet to configure additional columns. So that's what I want to talk about. On the config sheet, there are these, this little area down here, this blue uh, bubbles where it gives instructions on how to use this, but I'll summarize them in this little notes here which is there you can add up to three columns whatever you want to add I clear these out and in order to add a column let's say the columns are generically referred to as a b and c but you never see those letters but let's say i want to add here's the position column that's hard coded that you can't touch the next if you want to add a second column we put an x in this next column and you can decide what label or what you want to store in that. So let's say you, you want to put in what their uh, steel rating is. So we'll just put steel. And so you put it, once I put an X in here, I write, type steel, then click this button here that says save and update player, lineup player info on the score sheet. So it jumps back to the score sheet. And now you can see I have a second column called steel. And similarly, I could add another one and call it maybe uh, what their error rating is. And maybe another one might be, let's, I'll call it player ID. But you notice I didn't, I filled in the label, but I didn't put the X in here. So when I do this, that doesn't show up. It, it only shows up. When you put the X in. So that's why I only have three here right now. If I come back here and I put the X in here, 
if I want to. I'll now have all four of these columns and I can fill them in accordingly. And as you might guess, if I want to get rid of these columns, all I really need to do is get rid of these X's. And then in, right? They don't even have to be in order. So let's say I, I said, I don't want to show the steel or the ID anymore, but just the error rating. I'll leave that there on column B. And that it'll show me that column. So that's how you can get to kind of customize what additional information you'd like to track for each of your batters in the lineup. For the third topic in this video, I'd like to cover player substitutions, both batters and pitchers. I'm also using this halo effect on the mouse to make it a little bit easier to follow. So let's talk about changing pitchers. Now, in the general sense, I'm going to use the little help button here to bring up the cheat sheet to show you where to click when you want to make a pitching change. So this shows this horizontal area at the top of the score sheet cell is for changing pitchers. On the left is the vertical area for changing a hitter or like a pinch hitter. So let's say the Brady Bunch wants to change pitchers so that I'm going to click on this vertical area in this third inning cell with Bugs Bunny. It should make it, it makes it blue to indicate this is where the pitching change occurred. And to denote who's pitching second, we're going to double click in this the pitcher's list cell for the home team. And after you drag, we're going to put a comma. And then the next pitcher's name oops, is going to be Cousin Oliver with his mean curveball. So that's how we would do it. This is going to in the manual sense. Let's say Bugs comes in and uh, it's a screaming liner that ends up a double. Slowpoke Rodriguez would bat next, but let's say he can't hit a curveball, so the Looney Tunes say, oh, we're going to bring in a pinch hitter. So as we talked about, that's this left area. So let's say they click that, it should turn uh, pinkish purple like this, magenta, and Let's say that Elmer Fudd is going to pinch hit. So then we would write his name here. And let's just say he flies out. So that's how to make those substitutions manually. But now I'd like to undo those and show you how to do them, what I'll say, in a, a more efficient way. So let's undo our, undo that, take off the pitching change and remove Oliver from the pitching list up here. I'll leave the results in here because that's not really important. Okay, so the more efficient way to make player substitutions both from the bullpen and the bench is to use the, what I'll call bullpen and bench player lists. Now, one important note I want to make, first of all, is this is using version 1.54. So if you have an earlier version, then it won't work quite the same way. So I would just say, go and get the latest version, and you should be good. So on the lineups page, you know, we have, here's my Looney Tunes lineup, here's my Brady Bunch lineup, but when I built these templates, I think it's pretty typical you'd also have some other players that are going to be on the bench as well as in the bullpen. So that's why I made these areas here. So our visiting team today is the Looney Tunes. So what I'm going to do is, and I would typically do this you know, I, before I started the game, but I'm, going to sh I'm showing it to you now. So I would take their bench players and go paste them in this visitor bench area. So Control V to paste them in, and I would take their bullpen, Control C to copy, and paste them into their visitor bullpen area. And the same with the Brady Bunch going into the, as the home team. I'd copy their bench and put it in this home bench area, and their bullpen, and put it here. Now. When you do this at the beginning of the game, or before you start the game, everything will, I'll just say, work like it's supposed to. 
but there are times when you may forget or make a change and you want to modify these during the game and you want to make sure that those changes take effect. That's important then to click this this button here. So I'm, after I made those uh, changes, I'm going to click this button and then you get this message that says bench and bullpen player lists have been reloaded. So just say OK because they automatically load at the start of the game, but since we just changed it mid-game, it wouldn't know about these yet. So I made those changes. Now I'm going to go back to the score sheet and redo those player substitutions. So first I'm going to make that pitching change up here before Bugs batted. So once I click this uh, horizontal bar at the top of the cell, it puts in the blue, but then it brings up this player list. says so for the home bullpen, the list of relief pitchers, who do I want? And you can see these three people here um, are what we had on my, let me just cancel it a second. Those are the three people that we had right here in this home bullpen. So that's where that comes from. I'm going to clear this out and do it one more time. So when I put it in, it shows me the whole bullpen relief pitchers. I'm going to choose Oliver Tyler because of his wicked curveball, as we talked about, and click OK. And it automatically writes his name after Greg's up here in the home pitcher list box. Similarly, for the batter substitution, we were going to pinch it for Slowpoke Rodriguez. So when I choose the change hitter area on the cell, it colors it magenta and then pops up this visitor subs and says the, you know, these are the bench subs. So these are all the Looney Tunes people that I had in my designated on the bench. So here's my Elmer Fudd. I would choose Elmer Fudd and it just drops him in automatically. So using the bullpen and bench player lists, setting those up before the game, it just makes the flow of your game go smoother. You know, it's quicker to make these changes. You don't have to stop and get to your keyboard and type anything in. It just moves right along. So, and as I said before, this is in version 1.54. So make sure you have at least that version or later to use this feature. So that wraps up the uh, topics I wanted to cover in this video with customizations related to basically player management, both the lineups and the lineup ratings or information regarding each player, how to configure your bench and bullpens, and in general just how to set up, copy and paste your lineup templates. So hopefully that will make your experience with this spreadsheet more enjoyable and more efficient use of your time. Thank you. That wraps up this video. Thanks again for watching. And please feel free to leave me some feedback regarding what you like about the video, what you like about the spreadsheet, and just as important, what you don't like and ways you think it could even be better. Thanks again.